Uh, it has been a rocky year for tech, uh, more than 25% from 52-week highs. And our next guest says it's understandably difficult to invest with conviction when there are so many unknown variables at play. Uh, Wells Fargo chairman of Global Internet Investment Banking, Bob Peck, is with us to talk about how he's navigating the market and where we go from here. It's a pleasure to have him on this set at Code, Bob. Good Thanks to see Thanks so you. much for having me again. It's great to see you live again and great to be here at Code. Yeah. Kara, Kara and the Fox team did it again. Uh, they definitely set yeah. the tone uh, for technology in terms of conferences. Yeah. I, won't, I won't pin you down on names, but since we are talking about sure. Twitter, Musk, is yeah. that whole chapter being instructive for those considering large-scale M&A? You know, when you look at M&A, first of all, we're coming off the record year, right, of $6 trillion of M&A last year. This year, we're obviously down about 30 percent, give or take. Um, as you think about it, it still puts you one of the top three, four markets all time of M&A. And what's really interesting is think about three and a half trillion dollars of strategic capital on the side, cash on the side. Private equity has a trillion dollars, right? You've seen some moves by Vista, Toma Bravo, uh, Google, Amazon, et cetera, through the year. So M&A is really coming together here. And once again, putting you in a, in a, on par for a third or fourth best market. What I think is interesting, though, is when you think about the combinations that could happen there, cross-border, and now that we've gotten away from the peak valuations of October and November, and a lot of the targets that were being talked to were thinking, well, no, in October or November, I was valued sort of here. And now you've had that thawing out. So now you see parties coming to the table more to have these conversations. So I think you're going to have a strong M&A back half of the year and going into 2023. Where in which large players absorb smaller players who've seen valuations come way down. I mean, I... The yeah. first thing you think of is e-commerce. Yeah, but I mean, is, is there more than that? Well, well, even some larger ones, right? So I mean, you had obviously Microsoft and Activision, which was pretty huge, right? You had Citrix go. You had a bunch of others that have gone. There've been some big names, but yes, I think you're right. Some of these smaller players, they maybe thought they're either unicorns or decacorns, and now are sort of realizing, well, maybe I'm not. I still have great value, but maybe I'm not 15 times revenues, right? Maybe I'm only 10 times revenues, or whatever the multiples happen to be. You're starting to see that sink through, and particularly, you're starting to see the boards and the venture capitalists behind these companies. You know, push these conversations to happen if it's the best path forward. Is that why? Is that why we've gotten so many of these hunker down memos? Got to get simpler. Yeah. Got to cut costs because they're putting themselves up for sale. Well, that or you're trying to put in a better position for IPOs. Maybe it's a good transition to the IPOs. So as you think about the markets and what we think can happen for the IPO roadmap, 2022 was very small, right? You only had about 14 or so IPOs. Um, they've done okay, a down just a little bit. You look at that number, that 14 is down 90% from 2021, right? And the 2021 cohort is actually down 40%. So it hasn't been great for IPOs. But I think there's some green shoots, right? I think some things that we're looking at right now that sets up pretty well for a 2023, maybe a little bit in the back half of 2022. So what are we looking at? One, investors want to invest, right? And they're looking for companies with strong moats, profitability, path to profitability, strong companies. And the companies, to your point a moment ago, are making themselves more in that vein, making them IPO ready. Um, the green shoots, over 220 companies have filed S1s. So that's a good sign they're getting ready to go. Um, while follow-ons this year has been a difficult year versus 2021, August had its best month ever. Right? We've had 70 days since the last IPO. The worst you've ever seen with that is 100 days, and that was the great financial crisis mm, of 2008. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you do a handful of IPOs this year for the rest of the year, that'll get you to about 20, which once again is the lowest total since the great financial crisis. So what I think you're seeing is companies, boards, VCs getting ready to pursue either M&A, that's the best route, or be public ready for 2023 when that comes. Or ultimately, if they can you know, muddle through and not have to do either, do that, maybe take a growth round depending on value. Right. <laughs> FT, we, we mentioned this piece in the FT over the weekend, uh, the idea that 75 billion in SPAC returns yeah. are, were like forced savings yeah. that are now it's now looking for a home. And the argument was that it's bullish for equities. I have to imagine you think it's bullish for IPOs. I, I do. And once again, this is predicated, though, on the number one thing that investors are looking for. We pulled all of our institutional concepts and what are you looking for the most? And believe it or not, the answer wasn't that we want the market up 10% or we want it just down 5%. It was stability. And as you and I have talked about before, 80% plus of all IPOs have been done with a VIX less than 28. Hmm. As you know, today coming on set, I saw it around 27 or so. So you really need that stability, that sort of consensus view of where things are going. So not necessarily the market taking off for IPOs, but actually just having a stable environment where you have some sure footing going out. That's, that's, a, that's a great stat. I've not heard that one yeah. before. I uh, look forward to seeing you in, the, in some of the conferences this week, uh, Bob. Yeah. Thanks again for having me. It's yeah, great seeing great you. Great having you. Thanks. Bob Peck this morning.